Welcome to Career Tipper Podcast, hosted by Michelle Beatty. The Career Tipper Podcast is a motivational resource that shares career and entrepreneurial tips by industry experts that will help amazing people evolve to their professional best. And now your host, Michelle Beatty. Welcome to the Career Tipper Podcast. I'm your host, Michelle Beatty, career confidence coach and author. Episode one of the Career Tipper podcast features speaking coach Jared Uden. Jared is the creator of the From Zero to Impact online learning academy and live workshop series that helps people to conquer their number one fear on the planet, public speaking. Affectionately known as the audience energizer, Jared has worked as an audience warm-up guy for live television shows, international success events, and has traveled throughout the nation's backyard, empowering over 100,000 millennials to answer life's hard questions. Who am I? Where do I belong? And what should I be doing with my life? His book and platform message, Unfollow the Crowd, were both created for that very reason. From TEDx to TV shows, countless success conferences, and hundreds of school assemblies, Jared is the must-have speaker for organizations looking to train their groups to make an impact. Jared, welcome to the Career Tipper podcast. Thanks, Michelle. So glad to be here. Thanks for having me. This is awesome. I cannot wait for you to pour into the leaders and the listeners and everyone that has the nervous jitters about public speaking. I know you're (laughs) going to share some great nuggets with them. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, so before we go into all the details of like what you can help these amazing people learn about shaking out their public speaking jitters, how did you become a professional speaker? Like, what was your journey? Well, my journey was really interesting because I never expected to be in this position in my life. I actually spent uh, the greater part of you know ten years in school just thinking that I was supposed to be a newscaster. And so uh, I spent, you know, from the first grade on, I just know that public speaking had always been the one, the sort of the one string on my guitar, the one thing that I was good at. I was never afraid to speak in public. I was never afraid to address an audience. In fact, ever since uh, I was in the first grade, any time in class that the teacher would say, hey, can we have someone stand up in class and volunteer to read uh, this part of the book? I would always be the first one to raise my hand. I would always get up in front of the class. I would read the book out loud. And that was my Pretty much my favorite part of school is getting to be able to speak and write. And so all throughout my elementary education, I would be in spelling bees, little speech and essay competitions. And I think the the turn really came for me when we went to uh, a local news station in the sixth grade. We took a field trip and we as kids, our entire fifth grade class got to sit down in the news station and we got to watch two newscasters at the news desk deliver a live newscast uh, for the midday uh, viewing. And so right when I was sitting there watching these two newscasters, I thought, man, that's what I'm going to be when I grow up. I mean, what other career to better merge my two um, my two passions, which were writing and speaking, and this was going to be at scale. And so I spent my entire uh, high school career, middle school career, and even college career serving on news teams. I was a reporter for our local news station um, at our on our campus. And a uh, long story short, I had two internships at the very end of my uh, college journey, and that's when I discovered. I absolutely hated news. And so after graduation, my entire goal was to figure out, okay, what do I do with my life now? I know I still have this uh, talent. I love to speak. I love to communicate with people. I like to mentor. But I discovered after 10 years, the one career that I really wanted wasn't it. And so eventually, it took me about nine months after graduation to really sort of find myself, become more self-assured and self-aware. And Ultimately, I stumbled on two different jobs. I found them literally on Monster.com when that was a thing. Uh, two jobs that actually hired motivational speakers to do speaking. And so I, after that point, I traveled the country for two years. I was with Monster.com's um, Making It Count programs where I got to just deliver high school assemblies to large high schools of about 750 people and more uh, doing some really cool presentations, teaching students how to make it through high school and how to be successful in college. And then I I traveled with the International Auto Show as a narrator, 
getting to introduce all of the newest concept vehicles that were going to be hitting the market uh, in the next couple of years. And so that's when my career really started to just take off. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. So during the speaking for different, um, the television shows and the conference and things of that nature, when was the moment that you knew public speaking was like your industry niche? Like when did you know that that was your purpose? Yeah, I sort of always knew that this was going to be the one thing that I was going to be doing. But what I didn't know is where I was going to do it, how I was going to do it, and where my skills and my talents actually fit uh, sort of in the industry. But what I did is, you know, what I did discover, Michelle, is when I really decided to focus in on my strengths, what I really loved and what I was really good at, I think that is when the doors of opportunity began to open. Uh, when I graduated high school, I had an opportunity, actually, to go to Washington, D.C., to go to uh, the Target headquarters in Minneapolis and just kind of take a desk job. I had some family members that worked at these locations and said, hey, Jared, we can just hook you up with a job if you just need something here. Just come over here and do this and just whatever. And I discovered... I. I really thought to myself, Michelle, you know, I really don't want to just take any old job and just, you know, work for the next 35 years and completely ignore my passions and my strengths and what I'm really good at. I thought it'd be totally depressing. But when I finally got the job at the auto show, when I felt like my life was starting to go somewhere and take off, I started saying yes to all these opportunities. Like one day my agent called me and I was on my way from Philadelphia going back home to Detroit from a two week show. And she asked me, she said, Jared, hey, listen, we need uh, one extra person in Chicago tonight for this show. We're one person short and we, everyone else is busy. No one else really wants to do it. Everyone that just got off of the former show wants to go home and just take a break. And, and right there in the moment, I just said, yes. Now, I'm in the airport getting ready to fly home to Michigan. We rerouted uh, my travel to go to Chicago that night. So what ended up happening is on the plane, I ended up having to study a four-page technical script that I was going to have to deliver from memory that night to debut a brand-new concept vehicle. Long story short, when I got there to the convention center, my agent called me back and said, Hey, Jared, so listen, I hope you got the script memorized because tonight on your platform, we're going to have the head of General Motors there. We're going to have six different news cameras that are local. They're going to be filming your talk live and in front of like a thousand people or more. Are you ready? And honestly, Michelle, I was not ready, but I got up there. I said I was going to do this anyway. Got up there and I delivered. And that was sort of just a really defining moment for me because right after that, apparently I did well enough where they said, hey, Jared, so listen, tonight we're actually going to... Um, debut we're building a stage behind your set where the band u2 is going to be performing and what we're going to do is we're going to patch that uh recorded performance live into the jimmy kimmel show on abc tonight so since you did such a great job with you know hyping up the audience for your particular script they said how would you like to do an warm-ups uh, warm-ups for the audience tonight and have that patch live into the band and then you introduce the jimmy kimmel show tonight and I thought, wow, absolutely, I'll do that. And so, Michelle, what I discovered at that point is just saying yes to certain opportunities, the opportunities that most people shy away from or don't want to do. I think on the other side of that, that's when those sort of miracle or dream moments happen. And so people ask me today, how do you just kind of reverse engineer those successes to happen, those miracle career moments to happen? How do you manufacture that? And I don't know that there's a formula in manufacturing it, but what I can say is – when you get really clear and focused on your strengths, what you do best, what you love, and then try and find jobs or opportunities that are emblematic of that, I think what happens is more doors of opportunities open that are custom and tailor fit for your talents and your strengths. And so when I did that, um, I guess that is when my career really started to take off and more offers came in and then all of a sudden I was doing uh, voiceovers for radio commercials and even TV commercials I was doing. Then I started to get invited to do audience warm-ups for success conferences and live events. Which you're phenomenal at. I've seen you live in person. Like You are truly energizing. <laughs> <laughs> you are really energizing. Um, you're very motivational. Like If someone was sleepy or they were fearful, like you definitely have the ability to shake off the all, like I said earlier, like the jitters and get the um, excitement juices pumping and 
just, you know, help people to be happy to be in the room. Like they're grateful for that opportunity. Um, and you just speak like moments of aha. I've seen you and it's, it, you are, you really are energizing. So how did you get to, what made you step out and publish the book and now teach, want to teach others? Um, cause you definitely are inspiring you definitely this is what you do this is your profession like what made you make a add-on to that for for your professional endeavors yeah and i'll be honest with you michelle i never set out to write a book just about everything that i'm doing today i never set out to do it originally was not a goal and mind you i thought my job was going to be to be a newscaster for the rest of my life then after that when i got into public speaking i thought that's all i was going to be doing for the rest of my life but there came a point in my motivational speaking when I was traveling around speaking in all these cool high schools. I, I felt like I was hitting sort of a cap, like, um, you know, is this it? Is this all I'm going to be doing the rest of my life? And so I wanted to con- continue doing it, but I wanted to make more of an impact. And so what I did is I ended up getting a coach, a public speaking coach. And what he taught me was that, you know, Jared, if you really want to make an impact with the youth and with the schools, then what you need to do is write a book. You need to have that. One, uh, you need to have it as a follow-up product, but when you're good, people are always going to want to take another step with you after they're done hearing from you. Uh, That can be a blog, it can be a program, it can be a book, whatever it is. They need a second point of contact to continue on with you. Because when I go to a school, if I do a speech, you know, speeches don't necessarily change lives, but mentorship does. Coaching does. And So that was what my book was for. I needed a way to keep my coaching and my ideas and my voice in the minds of my listeners after I got off the stage. So that's when I started. That's when I wrote the book. And I think it took me further. It took my message further than I could have expected because people order the book offline. They uh, buy it in bulk and to give, you know, to their students at school, to people buy it for their kids, for their college students. Uh, And so my message does go far now. I started something recently where I'm actually training other speakers to be able to make an impact in their own lives. And so what I've discovered, Michelle, is, again, mentorship is what changes lives. That's what actually transforms. And so what people were coming to me to over the years is, you know, hey, Jared, we want to know if there's any kind of way you can teach us to be speakers like you. You know, how can I make an impact? And so what I would do is I would train people here and there every time they would have a media appearance or if they had to do a stage talk or a speech competition, I would coach them through the jitters. I would tell them how to reframe and reshape their story. And even if they were just a salesperson, I wanted to have better sales. I would teach them the art of communications and how to fire up the brains of their listeners or their clients to make them kind of come over to your side and agree with your point of view and to love whatever you're selling and to buy whatever you're selling. And it was just now, this past year, where I came uh, into the revelation, why don't I just create an entire coaching service around this? Mm -hmm. Since this is what people are telling me that they want, why not do this at scale? And so now I have clients that I train one-on-one every single week to not just be speakers, but to kind of find their, their power, to not be afraid of their personal awareness or their core or of who they are. I sort of, I I coach them out of the jitters and the anxiety that's associated usually with uh, public speaking, whether it's going to be a one-on-one conversation uh, times 500 on the stage or a conversation with three people in the interview. I teach them how to how to share their story, how to share their experience in a way that's palatable to the listener and so that they can have more success when it comes to sales, when it comes to getting hired, or just when it comes to just living their, um, their best life. But I teach them I teach that to them through the art of public speaking. Are your lessons based on your own lessons learned or from observation or just what you know to be true from witnessing others succeed in life? It's a combination of all of them. Uh, I can tell you, even though I'm not afraid to speak in front of an audience, there have been times where I've completely just bombed in front of an audience. There have been times where I remember my very first speech, I got in front of a college audience of incoming college freshmen and all of their parents, and there were about 800 people total. I remember I got up on stage and... I had memorized my entire presentation, but then by the time I hit the mic and actually got ready to deliver, I completely forgot all of my points. And I bombed, and I had to like struggle to recover for that ent- for the rest of that entire day. But 
I teach from that experience. And then there are times where I bombed, but then I came back the next day, had studied the night before, had really delivered, had really uh, memorized and studied the way I was supposed to, and then came back the next day and absolutely just crushed it. And so I teach from that experience. I um, have studied under some of the top speakers in our country who have really trained and coached me on how to tell my story, on how to be authentic. I've learned, you know, just all of these lessons and I've read books on the topics on having now spoken over 150,000 people. I sort of know exactly what it takes to get myself out of the anxiety. I know what it takes to relate to an audience, whether they're teens, whether they're college students, or whether they're 45 year old entrepreneurs. Uh, I know what it takes to relate. And the, the formula is pretty much the same for everyone. And so I teach pretty much from that, uh, that roundabout perspective. But then I think honestly, where my true talent is, Michelle, is when I listen to someone's story, when I coach them through a few processes and ask them a few questions, I listen to them and then I can usually detect what is, what are their other roadblocks? What are their other issues? Sort of what's behind the anxiety. And then I kind of custom fit my solution to tailor fit what they're going to need to see, do, and hear. And when that happens, then it's magic. Magic. How, what is the magic for you? <laughs> like, I want to hear, yeah. hear about everyone seeing you know, different terms, including magic and next level and slay. So what, what is that? <laughs> when, when you help them create the magic, what is that next moment that they're preparing for that could be magic, can't be transforming for your, for your clients? What does that look like? Yeah. Yeah, well, for me, magic is when I see the light bulb come on. When I see someone finally have the aha moment that their story is good enough to tell. Mm. That aha moment is when they find out that they are actually good enough to be heard and to be seen on stage. They're good enough to be listened to where other people should respect uh, their experiences, what they've been through, or their advice. I have several clients right now, and I guarantee you, Michelle, every last one of them, uh, when they first come in contact with me, their number one fear is the anxiety. They feel like they're going to get up on stage and fall apart. And so I'm coaching some people through this right now, through the anxiety and just helping them to understand how powerful their perspective is, how powerful their stories are, what they've been through, and how people would absolutely love to hear uh, their journey their trajectory and how people are really going to benefit and impact from it. I think so often, Michelle, a lot of us get into this thing when we first start off as speakers, we get into what I call analysis paralysis, where we're so focused on someone else that's out there who's doing a phenomenal killer job, just crushing it in the speaking market. And then we compare our story to theirs or we compare our inability or lack of experience to theirs. And then we start paralyzing ourselves thinking that, well, my story is not good enough. Well, my advice isn't good enough. Well, I'm not old enough or I'm too old or I'm not experienced enough. But then when I listen to their stories and then I just kind of play it back for them and I tell them how impactful it is, it's like giving life to someone. And then all of a sudden the light bulb goes off and then that little bit of uh, courage comes in and then all of a sudden they come to life and they're not afraid anymore. That's where the magic happens. To me, that's what the light bulb and the magic moment is. No, I totally agree. I know like for myself when I'm coaching clients and just interacting with my peers, like it's true that um, when you're seeing someone else, you know, a lot of people I interact with are cheerleaders of each other. So it's not like, oh my goodness, there's no like hate being tossed any kind of way. Right. It's like, you know, like let's cheer you on. Like how can I help you? Let's all win. That whole type of thing. But it is true like so many times – you have to remind people not to compare their chapter five to someone else's chapter like 20. Like there's some absolutely lessons and trials and um, next level and all sorts of stuff that went in between there that they had to figure out that you have to figure out for yourself too. Absolutely. And usually what we find, Michelle, and I know you know this from being a coach, usually people cannot see the fullness of their own potential. It always takes someone else unlocking it, showing it to them, and then help along to get to their ultimate potential. Yeah, I call it the twinkle in the eye moment where they, it's like, what? Like, like that, oh, like, I got this. Yes, you do have this. You can't <laughs> can do this without a doubt. 
Absolutely. No, no, that's so great. So everyone has advice. Like, you know, we're all, people always share advice and with all the different arenas that you've been in, what has, which advice have you received personally, professionally has really transformed your life for the better? Yeah. So I'd say personally, the advice that I received that's really made an impact for me is this, and this came from one of my personal mentors and they told me, Jared, what people crave is authenticity. They want to know your process. They want to know more about your life. They want to know, uh, you know, where you started and how you got through your challenges in life. Because what I've learned from that is authenticity is what really helps people. I can get up on stage, Michelle, and I can motivate a crowd of people and, you know, have them cheering and have them feeling excited. But what's really going to impact and change them is when I talk about the time that I was homeless right after a successful high uh, college graduation. When I talk about what it was like to eat off the 89 cents menu at Wendy's and trying to scrape up dimes and pennies just to pay for food every day because I was a broke college graduate that didn't have my life together. That's what changes people. That's what causes them to see differently and think differently. And that's what causes connection to happen because we can all identify it with a time where we kind of felt lost in life or didn't feel like we had the support in life or when we just didn't know what was going to happen next or when we took a, you know, a chance or a risk jumped over the cliff and didn't know if the parachute was going to open, but we decided to do it anyway with no clear landing in sight. And so that's one of the biggest things that I've learned personally is uh, people crave authenticity. I think those kinds of stories, when you just share your life, you share what you've been through, you share your embarrassing moments, your pain points, and just what you've been through, I think that helps people. And so as an entrepreneur, when we share those stories, um, it causes people to really buy into our brand because they know that we're not this you know, perfect figurehead who's speaking from the mountaintop and not talking about the journey. I think that sharing that authenticity and talking about the journey is what really helps people to connect with us. So personally, I think that is what's really, that's the probably the best advice I've ever received. And the way it's changed me, it's caused me to change the way that I show up online, on social media, and even for my clients. So I have a blog, I have a website, I have an Instagram that I speak on all the time. And one thing I know is that um, when you're authentic, you're confident. Uh, you, and when you're, but when you're ashamed of your your lack of progress or your age, or if you're just insecure in general, you stop showing up. You know, you stop posting, you stop blogging. And what I what I've learned is the people that follow me, the people who have subscribed to me, even they're there because. There's something about me that they love. There's something about me that they connect with. So they want to hear from me. They want me to be consistent. So I've learned to just be authentic, share my journey, share my story, and just show up. Sometimes I just get online and just share what I'm working on that day. You know, I'm putting together an amazing product for you guys. I think you guys are going to love it. Hey, I want you guys to respond right now and tell me what you think. Is there anything I can change or add to it? What are you guys really thinking or feeling right now? So just being authentic and sharing more about my journey. But that's personal. Professionally, I would say, again, share the process. That's something else that I got from one of my business mentors. You know, share the process. I think a lot of us are so focused on creating really fancy content and putting it out online. But, you know, it's hard to create fancy content every single day. Um, we, we see so many you know, beautiful commercials that are so well-crafted, but I think, again, what people crave is they want to know the journey. Tell us about you know, your success routine. Tell us about what you're doing this morning when you wake up on Saturday. Are you running three miles today? Are you sitting down reading a certain book? Share with us what you're reading. Share the process. Share what was really tough about this week and how you got through it. Share with us a novel solution you came up with to some age-old problem. Share with us what's going on, and then when we can buy into you that way as a human being, we'll be more apt to buy your products. And so personally and professionally, I would say, one, authenticity is what people crave, so be authentic. Be your authentic, authentic self, and professionally, I say, share the process. Indeed. Agreed. Agreed, agreed, agreed. Okay, Jared, so what's next for you? What's next for From Zero to Impact? What's on that to-do list? Yes. And so <laughs> this year, Michelle, <laughs> I'm already fired up about it. I kicked off 2018 so excited because uh, this year, what I really want to do, I'm starting off by 
building a small tribe of coaching clients, people who want to really learn and master the art of public speaking, whether it's for their business or whether they're looking to just make it into a law school program. They know speaking is going to be what counts or maybe someone you're a professional and you have, you know that public speaking will help take your career to the next level. Or maybe you've been asked to do a little public speech at a college and I have all of those clients on my roster. And so this year I'm really, really committed and focused to taking that small group of clients, you know, that are going to be between 20 and 50 and just really coaching them all the way to success through mastering the art of public speaking. And so that's what we're working on right now. I just got done meeting with some clients today and sending off some follow-up notes and homework assignments to some of my clients right before we got on our interview here tonight. And then, um, so I'm doing that all week long. And then at the end of the quarter, we're all going to get together for a really huge event. It's going to be all 50 of us in a, inside of a room. We're going to do a half day live mastermind intensive where we're going to kind of take all of our speaking to the next level and we're going to celebrate all of our successes. Sensational. Celebrate. It's always the best thing to do to honor growth. Absolutely. So have you learned anything from your clients like you're the teacher, but has the teacher learned anything? Has the coach learned anything from working with your different clients? Oh, all the time. And Michelle, I've, I've learned so much from these, um, from all the people that I've coached, not just through this coaching program, but over the years. Um, and one thing that I will share that I've learned, and this is over the years, and this is a hard one, but Michelle, I've really had to learn how to not be overly committed to them getting it right. Uh, at the end of my process, life change is really the end result of my product of what I offer. But as a client, you actually have to do the work. So I'll motivate you and I'll push you as far as you're willing to go. But this is what I know. I have to limit my level of investment in you. Is As tough as that sounds, but it's tough love. I've decided I'm going to give you the information. What you do with it is your business. You take it to the next level, great. You don't, fine. As an entrepreneur and as a coach, the reality is I can't afford to be that vested in you getting this right. And so I've really learned that sometimes people, you know, maybe they don't want the help or maybe they've decided that this level is as far as they want to go and they don't want to be pushed to anything greater. And I've had to learn to just be okay with that and not be uh, so e emotionally connected to their progress or wanting success for them more than they want it for themselves. Because there are others on my roster who really do need my time, who really do want my coaching, and it's a disservice to them who really do need me. So that's a long-winded answer, but I think that can help a lot of people, especially that are mentors or are life coaches to other people or spiritual coaches to other people, is be committed to their progress, but don't be so emotionally connected to them getting the process right. I get that. I understand that. So what, when you are interacting with your clients and you're like, okay, when you're making the determination who's fully vested and who is working on a work in progress of becoming fully invested, what are the components of effective goal setting that yields results? Like, how do you determine that? Like, what do you, what have you noticed that helps determine and confirm that you know that your clients are serious about accomplishing the goals they set. Yeah, I watch their routine. That's really it. Um, so every single week, I give all of my clients some sort of homework. I give them a pre-session homework that, go into, that goes into our next session. And then I also follow up with them and have them follow up with me. And, we te and we, I sort of test them on their progress. It's, they're really simple assignments. But... Every single week, my each of my clients, they're responsible for engaging me and then following up with their homework. So, for example, uh, some of my professional salespeople who are my clients, what they'll all have them do is in one session, we might go through how to deliver your 30-second profile or your elevator pitch. We'll work on it. We'll adjust it. We'll tweak it. We'll have you deliver it in different tones, different voices, um, just to really get your your muscles built for delivering that with confidence. And so once we're done doing that in a session, 
we'll rewrite two different versions of it. And then in the week, within two to three days, you're responsible for calling me, getting me on the phone, and then delivering it to me as if it's your first time delivering it. And so we have a lot of things that we do, a lot of fun activities that sort of get their 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 uh, their juices flowing and get them really engaged with the craft. But again, it's a routine and you have to be invested in the game somehow. You have to also reach out to me as as a uh, as, as the client and me being the coach. So I always watch people's routines. I see how, uh, how best they are. I sort of set the table, but it's up to you to come to the table. Well, have a seat at the table then. I hear you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So reinventing your brand, that's something every entrepreneur goes through and coaching myself. I know that is a constant reinvention of your brand and, um, as an entrepreneur, you're always like staying in tune to what's new, how you need a shift. Like, you know, even right now, people, entrepreneurs and coaches are going through a shift. Those that are frequent users of Instagram, like becoming more personal and figuring out how to stay with the times of the algorithms and things of that nature, like just for example. So um, I just want to find out from you, what have you found to be rewarding or a great stretch for you as you've gone through the journey of reinventing your brand? Yeah. So for me, anytime I've reinvented my brand, it's always been outgrowth of me having attained more and more clarity. Right. So if you were to watch my platform a year ago, I I was just releasing my new book, unfollow the crowd. And I was really focused on um, high school students and young millennials just making smarter life choices and finding their purpose in life and their passion in life and going after that and motivation for the journey. Now on the second round of brand reinvention, what I'm really focused on are training people in the art of motivational speaking and how to use that to, to live their best lives. And so what I found is every time I've reinvented my brand, it's been because of more clarity on my own path. So on what I offer and when I provide more clarity online, people understand my offering a lot better. And so from a business standpoint, people are are more able to make a purchase from me. They're, it's easier for them to work with me because they it's more clear on what I offer. And when I'm more clear, they're more clear on what I can do for them and how they benefit. So that is probably the number one benefit of me having reinvented my brand a few times uh, and my most recent brand reinvention. When it comes to Instagram Live and Facebook Live and all the, you know, the boosting and all the new ways that you can market, I think uh, it's been an interesting shift because the pressure there is to share a little bit more of your life. Uh, you know, share a little bit more behind your every day. And it's because it's so easy to turn on the phone and just go live on video. Like, Hey guys, here I am in the car. or Hey, look, here's my messy kitchen. Uh, of course we don't want to advertise that, but I think our audiences now, they expect that because they know it's easy to just turn on the camera and show your life. And so it, I think I, I've had to go to a new level in just being comfortable and sharing Hey, here's me sitting down at a table, unedited, unfiltered. This is what I'm working on today, and here's where I'm at. So I think that has caused a major shift for, I think, everyone in the um, in the business landscape to just share more behind the scenes. Because yeah. I think that's what's really what people want. They want to know. They want to know how the magic happens. <laughs> yep, they sure do. They want to know what you're cooking for dinner, what's in the fridge. They want to know what kind of car you're driving, open up the garage. They want to know everything. Work in progress. Work in progress. Absolutely. (laughs) No pressure. None none at all. (laughs) So what does professional development mean to you as a professional coach? So to me, professional development as a coach, it means not just getting skills, Like, you know, we can all go get a degree, we can all go attend a workshop or purchase an online course or build some skills or get a certification. But to me, professional development means becoming more of yourself and strengthening sort of your internal compass. To me, it means self-awareness, becoming more self-assured and becoming more confident in your own talents, your own strength and in your own purpose. To me, that's what uh, professional development means because 
the stronger you are with your talents, your strengths, what you do best and who you service best, when you know those answers, when you're really self-aware, it's a lot easier for you to provide services and benefits to the world, to other people, and through a company if you have a job. So for me, that's what professional development is. Uh, it's knowing what you do best. It's knowing what your personal hottest offering is. It's knowing what people really want from you. And then investing and going all in on mastering uh, whatever that is. You have to take time to master. I agree with that. It's a lifelong thing. Oh, my goodness. Yes, it is. High five from Miami. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. But, you know, Michelle, one thing I do want to share is, you know, a lot of my clients, I don't care if they're 50 years old, 30 years old, or 16 years old, a lot of them kind of come to these roadblocks in life or these early quarter-life crises where they just they feel like they don't know what they should be doing with their life. Uh, here's what I want to offer. If that's you and if you're in that position – the answers really are inside of you. I think sometimes we just come across so many failures or experiences or we try something and it doesn't work and we just kind of get confused about our path. One of the things I share with all my students is this. First, in order to figure out what you do want to do, what you should be focusing on, you have to first figure out what you don't want to do. So if you've ever had a job that you just hated, that absolutely sucked, write it down. At least you know there's nothing to that. You should not be going back to that again. Then I want you to think about the passions that you have. Think about the things that people come to you to all the time to problem solve against. What kind of things do people come to you with advice about? What kind of things do people always come to you uh, for help about? Write those things down because I'm sure there's, there's a common thread there. There's, there's some clues there. Then the last thing I always share with people, every time you find yourself going throughout your day, getting excited about something or looking forward to something, uh, write it down. Every time you find yourself caught up in an activity that you love doing and that you just can spend hours passing the time by doing, whatever it is, I don't care if it's reading, if it's writing, if it's quilting, or if it's uh, creating videos or funny memes on, on Instagram, whatever it is, write it down because I guarantee you there's something to that. And then the last thing, Michelle, I always tell people, think of the five closest people in your life. Now, the caveat here is they need to be people that love you, like a really close friend or a pastor or a mentor or a parent, someone that you absolutely trust, five people. And what I want you to do is I want you to prepare them for a conversation. What I want you to do is ask them, and they don't have to answer right away. They can respond to you over email or text or take a week if they need to think about it. But ask these people that are closest to you that you trust, what is it that you think I am? honestly and legitimately good at and then after that also ask them to answer now what are the things that you think i absolutely suck at that i'm no good at and let them know that you're not going to be offended at whatever they say you're not going to be offended at their answer you're not going to get mad at them and not talk to them for a year but whatever they say be as honest as they can and just respond to you and you it'll mean the world to you I guarantee you, Michelle, that when I ask people this question and let them respond to me anonymously or later on in the future, I got some answers that literally blew my mind. First of all, most of them said, sort of, sort of told the same story about me. And there was a common thread there. They actually confirmed some things that I already knew about myself that I just really didn't, hadn't been paying attention to. And that sort of gave me so much clarity and direction in my life. Um, and that's when I started doing voiceovers for commercials and uh, voiceovers for audiobooks and just different things that I could do with my talent that I had no idea even existed. And all of those things opened up doors of opportunity for me. And now my path is clear and it makes sense. It's, it's difficult. I'm constantly learning, but it's clear and it makes sense. And I think that's what so many of us are searching for right now in our lives, no matter who you are, or what age you are. We're searching for clarity. We're searching for purpose. And we're searching for the place that we can go where we can have the most meaning and impact. But that's a way to do it. Clarity is a gift. Yes, it is. It is. <laughs> it's a gift you can give yourself, though, just by putting in the work, just by committing, committing to something, uh, by committing to not quitting. You'd be, Michelle, you're, you'd be surprised at how many, especially the, my younger millennial clients who sometimes they want to start a business or they have this awesome idea and they 
put money into it, they develop it, and then in two weeks when they're no longer excited, excited about it or the shininess or the newness of it just wears off, they just drop it and they quit. And I say, hey, what happened to this awesome idea you had? They're like, ah, I tried it. It didn't work. I'm like, but dude, you only gave it like two weeks. <laughs> so, you know, yeah. we have to be committed to finishing something. Just commit. Go all in. I remember – I did a network marketing company, Michelle, years ago. My, uh, I think it was my second year out of college, and it, we sold vitamins. It was something so random, but it, I hated it. It was, it, it was terrible. It sucked. But you know what? I committed, and I said, okay, you know what? I'm going to commit to making it to this certain level. It was called regional director at the time, which meant I built a team of eight people and I sold so many units and made so you know a certain amount of money. And I told myself when I hit this position. I will then reevaluate whether or not I want to quit. But I'm not going to quit until I at least hit this landmark that I wrote down that I committed to. So a goal that should have only taken me three months took me about 12 months, took me an entire year. But I did not quit. I made myself stick it out in the game long enough to see the victory. And then, um, you know, at that point, I did decide to move on and quit and move on to something else. But it felt so good because I met so many amazing people in the journey. I mentored people. I got to stretch and test my leadership skills. I um, I met it to a certain point in that company where I earned equity. And then years later, when they sold the division, I got a check for like almost $9,000. So it was good. It, you know, And I can call upon those lessons that I learned to this day. But here's the truth. How many people can honestly say that? How many people can honestly say that they've stuck with something that they didn't want to stick with until the finish, until they met a goal and saw the results? Not many. No, not many, because you're right. They think they don't realize the labor of commitment that is required. What you were saying, they don't realize that you're going to have your moments of like, this worked and then you're going to have your moments of oh my gosh what just happened (laughs) (laughs) you sure will but you know stick stick with those moments push press your way through go to the goal commit yourself not to you know to to stay in it realistically until you hit the goal now of course there's wisdom needs to be added with it i say we all we should all get help we should all get mentorship someone who's actually traveled you know the mile so that when times do get tough they can pour into us and say okay this is nothing let me coach you through this step let me coach you through this process let me help you get over the hump so we definitely need to add coaching and wisdom and mentorship to whatever process we're going through. Because, you know, one thing, we don't want to commit to something that's completely just unrealistic. Like, you shouldn't be committed to making it on American Idol, for example, if you absolutely cannot sing. <laughs> you know, let's be realistic about this. But I say we should definitely think very wisely through the things that we want to do with our lives, commit to the challenge, and then get mentorship in the process. Because a mentor, can sort of reach inside of you and see what your talents are and they can guide you to the results, but they can also fast track you through certain pieces and parts of it. The way I believe there are no overnight successes, but there are a five year overnight successes, people who put in the work. Um, you know, a lot of people that pop up as famous rappers or famous whoever, a lot of people that you see on Facebook Live now as you know famous entrepreneurs, we were we're sometimes hypnotized into thinking that that just happened overnight. When really they've been putting in the work for 15, 20 years, and then overnight they got on Instagram or Facebook Live and they're showing you the accoutrements of success. But they put in the labor, and so I want people to not be afraid to put in the labor, get mentorship, get help, but commit. I I, I totally agree, and I myself personally have. T- definitely been um impacted in the most amazing positive way of mentorship and coaching um helping me find clarity helping me connect to my purpose and try something new so i think it's phenomenal that you position you have positioned yourself to help people to connect to that because it is such a blessing for people to be able to not only afford a coach, but also an, an encounter one that is as dedicated as you are to seeing people go from zero to impact, to making an impact in society, making an impact on their own personal legacy, making an impact on their impression of themselves, making an impact on their confidence. Like those things, once you've gone through the process of a service that you offer, they're priceless. Like when you look back, 
Mm-hmm. It's priceless. You're investing in your own growth. What I believe is that when people are really ready to fast track their success, they'll make the investment in themselves. And Michelle, just kind of backpedaling here, this is why I require all of my clients to pay a top dollar to coach with me. Because what that shows me is when you're willing to invest in yourself and in your growth and your potential, that tells me that you're serious. That tells me that you have skin in the game. And that's just another lesson that I've learned from one of my mentors because I've always been a bleeding heart. I've always wanted to go to schools and go to colleges and just, just, you know, just do it for free mentor for free. Cause I wanted everyone to be able to have access. But what I've had to learn Michelle, the hard way is when people are not made to make some sort of investment in their own growth, they won't take it seriously. I think about, you know, a lot of the things that I've gotten for free, like when I get a free book, it's like, okay, toss it in the back seat and I never really pick it up. But when I'm made to pay for that book or pay for that coaching system or that series of books, I have to pay a hundred dollars or a thousand dollars. I take it seriously and I make sure I press in and get everything out of that investment. And usually it's because I made the investment. So I, anytime someone offers me something at a discount, sometimes I just say, you know what? No. Thank you, but I'm going to pay a full price for this because I know what this means for me. And so you're, it's so true. You ha- and you have to make that investment. So true. So true. Okay, Jared, how do you dream bigger? Like from coaching everyone who you interact with and, you know, on social media and your clients and your From Zero to Impact program, you're teaching people how to dream bigger, but how do you position yourself to dream bigger? Yeah. You know what? It's, there's something about the path, Michelle. It's not, it's not a fight. It's not something that I have to uh, push myself like, okay, Jerry, we're going to have to dream bigger today. Come on, find a way to dream bigger. No, it's honestly, when you get on this sort of purpose path for your life, it has its own way right when you're in the middle of just working on one revelation or one business idea, right in the middle of that, it's almost like a ton of bricks just hits your 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 spirit. It's like, oh wow, here's a new vision. Here's where I'm going to take my coaching clients. Here's the next level for them. Here's the next dimension. This is what I'm going to have to do next. And so even now, right when I'm in the middle of just planning my coaching lessons for my clients for this month and even next month, all of a sudden I have this you know, this new vision for where we're going to go at for the second half of the year and the new levels that I'm going to take them to. And I can't wait to get to that, but (laughs) I have to finish up this first round and this first level and get them through that first. And so I just say, when you're on the pathway to purpose, when you're really just, you know, just rocking it out with your passion and your talents and your purpose, when you're just servicing the people through what you do best, it'll just come at you. It's like when you're on that path, What's next in your purpose in your life will just start to make itself, it'll it'll just appear. And you're going to find yourself not being able to write fast enough, not being able to paste up faith pictures fast enough of what that next level looks like. It'll just come to you and you're going to have to keep up with it. That's true. That's true. Um, Jarrett, I am so excited and appreciative that you were the first guest on Career Tripper podcast. This has been a year of shift for me. Um, for 2018, I've deemed it a year of shift for me. And that's why I'm relaunching my podcast in a different way because I want it to, my mission is to help people connect to being, to evolving to being their professional best. And so one thing I realized, not only do I want to share stories of amazing seasoned professionals that have been in the game pursuing their profession for some time, that have a resource to offer, I also want them to be inspired and the listeners be able to connect and work with them to help them evolve because it takes a village sometimes to help people evolve to their next level of professional best. So when I thought of this podcast episode and I wanted, I know public speaking is something that I encounter a lot with um, my clients and just people that I interact with, they want to perfect their public speaking, um, just be it in board meetings, be it interacting with colleagues, um, presenting themselves at networking events, or trying to pursue their own brand. They're like, Michelle, I'm nervous. And you came to mind. I'm like, Jared would be the 
ideal person <laughs> <laughs> to come on the podcast and share that information, um, his knowledge and expertise um, with the with with my listeners. So thank you so much. I so value your support um, for this endeavor. And please share your favorite quote or affirmation that keeps you creating career tipping moments. Yes. Well, first, Michelle, I got to share with you. Thank you so much for having me here. And I just have to take this moment to share with you how awesome you are Aww. because I've, we've crossed paths professionally uh, several times and I've seen you at career fairs uh, for an entire county just hold it down and deliver messages to all aspiring you know, career intenders. I've seen you motivate people and lift them up and show them how they can be their best. Your blog post, your book, Confidently You, um, it really is a labor of love. And I can tell you're doing it for the right reasons with the right intentions and heart in mind. I've seen you take people and you know, dust them off pick them up, develop them, and help them land jobs and careers that are a perfect fit for them so where they can support their families and where they can live a better life. And so you're creating a legacy right now, not just through Career Tipper and not just through your book, but through the lives that you touch, you have a, a strong legacy happening. So I appreciate that. I respect that. And um, I'm really excited to be with you for your Genesis episode of uh, Career Tipper of the podcast here. And so thank you so much, Aww. Michelle. I would say my quote, my favorite thing that I live by, and this is daily, never downgrade your lifestyle, upgrade your hustle. Because as long as there is breath left in your body, there is always purpose to be done. Okay, I'm like doing the happy dance over here because I am totally <laughs> in agreement with that. And thank you so much for the feedback. I appreciate it. So please, please, please share with the listeners how they can get in touch with you. Yes, so everything can be found on my website, jaredspeaks.com, J-A-R-R-O-D speaks.com. There you have my videos, my blog, you have my all the links to my courses. I do some free courses online um, at from zero to impact.com. All that is found through my main website at jaredspeaks.com, even my Instagram, where you can just DM me and find out motivational videos and chat with me daily. All that's there. I'm on Instagram at Jared Speaks, and that's the same with Twitter and with Facebook. Woohoo! And you can find me, Michelle Beatty, on Instagram at Career Tipper and also on the blog, careertipper.com. And make sure that you sign up for our um, newsletter. Great information is being sent out about the podcast, upcoming guests, and just awesome career advice. So listeners, thanks for joining us today. And remember to be confidently you. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of the Career Tipper Podcast. We're grateful for our listeners and guests. For more resources about how to evolve to your professional best, share your comments and feedback about this episode and your suggestions for future guests, visit careertipper.com. Until next time, be confidently you.